Are you ready? Okay. Hi friends, how are you today? I'm doing pretty well. My name is Kay and this is my Cave of Possibilities. I have knitting things to the left of me, cross stitch stuff up there to the right, and here I am stuck in the middle of with you. Princess, you'll see her wandering around here and there, is very anxious because I came home from work just not five minutes ago and since this is the only day of the week that I have a little bit of quiet, she's expressing her very, very much joy that I am here. This is the only day that we really disagree on uh, her behavior because I need to talk to you and she wants me to talk to her. But anyway, um, well, let's get into the, the good cross stitch stuff. Most of my projects are pretty much related to uh, going to Stitch West this past weekend. Please stop, sweetheart. Please stop. And I uh, worked on a couple of projects in the run-up towards Stitch West. Cat management. In the run-up to Stitch West, so I would be able to finish a couple of small things off while I was there. I've never finished a project off at a retreat, so I thought this year, this year I want to ring the bell. So, uh, I just brought a big old tub of stuff. It's in front of me. We'll go through it. It's probably going to be a little chaotic, to be completely honest. But, um, you know, chaos is kind of how we run around here, isn't it? Yeah, chaos. So, let's see, the first thing that I worked on once we had arrived at Stitch West was the, here we are, the Halloween Quaker from Primrose Cottages. It's such a cute little one. I changed out some of the colors, uh, specifically the yellow and the orange because I decided that I wanted to stitch my piece on a really a light purpley light pink uh, fabric because purple is very much a Halloween color and purple is very much my color if you couldn't tell from the uh, shirt and the sweater and the throw over the back of the couch and the cat well I think they'd get mad at me if I tried to dry, dye the cat purple but we haven't thought about it we do have some hair dye that would probably do the trick. We won't do that because she wouldn't like it. Anyway, wow, that was an aside. Anyway, so, other way, this looks better. This is my finished project. I stitched a whole lot of it before I got to Stitch West. And so I only had the spiders and the spider web to work on uh, up there in the upper, mm, it's on my upper right hand corner, so it's your upper left. Reverse and directions are never my strong suit. Well, heck, left and right is never my strong suit in the first place. Anyway, I substituted uh, Yukon Gold, Weeks Dye Works Yukon Gold, and Weeks Dye Works Carrot for the orange and the yellow from what was called for on the pattern. The pattern calls for, let me double check because I found that I didn't need as many skeins. I did use two skeins of the onyx, one skein of parchment. Uh, they call for two skeins of the sweet potato. I used carrot and only used one skein, although it was really kind of pretty darn close. So I was a little worried and had pulled the second skein of carrot out of my um, stash to make sure that would work. And then Sassy Brassy is a color that I replace for Yukon Gold and it also calls for one. So I would say if you're a conservative stitcher, you could probably do one of whatever you choose for orange and not the two as, as is called for. So that was my first finish. I finished that um, hmm, Friday afternoon after lunch and ran up and rang the bell and then I started on uh, well working on a project that I need to do a little bit of frogging for 
That is stuck. Okay, hang on. I told you it would be chaos. I have threads stuck all over the place. So I have been working on Santa's Village for half of forever. I don't remember when it came out. Probably 20... I call everything 2018 because that was when I pretty much took my hiatus from stitching. And so in 2018 I had been working on this and um, I have done some unstitching. Give this a fold so you can see kind of what we're up to. As you can see, there we are, right here. I reversed this garland so that it would be pointing up instead of down like all of these garlands are. I thought that would be a nice um, difference, except to my eye, having them both point to the houses in the middle, it feels like it squeezes them in there and it's not as light and airy as I had hoped it would. Now if I had probably reversed it so that these were arching up and these were arching down, it would have widened these and probably worked out okay, but it depends upon what I would have thought of what's going on in the top houses. But anyway, I had stitched these upside down garlands all the way across to the other side. And as you see, there I have successfully frogged out three of those garlands, so now I just have the fourth one left to do. I frogged out the entire garland that was under the uh, reindeer barn while I was there at Stitch West. So that was a big accomplishment woot woot, for, for me. Now I just need to take a deep breath, sit back and relax in my squishy chair, and frog out that last um, upside down garland and then I'll settle in and start stitching them in right side up. Let's pause. Did you have a little dance break there during the pause? You could have. It would have been excellent. What do we want to say, do now? Shall we do the uh, mm, retreat project? Because that was what was handed out next and what I pretty much started working on next. Our guest designer was Kathy from Hands On Design and I have enjoyed her projects um, for a very, very long time. I'm pulling everything related out that I can find. Yeah. There's one more thing. No, there's two more things. Oh dear. I don't know where that other thing is. Oh well. Oh, well. Hi. Yeah? Sorry, talking to the cat. Okay. Um, the uh, design that Kathy released to us is kind of reflecting weirdly. Make today count. I just, it really just hit me right in the right spot. And so I started on that, but I'm not going to show it to you yet. Not until I show off where we got to on the uh, last day. But it came with everything. And I do mean everything kitted up. There was, I mean, an entire uh, bag full. Here is mat board cut to put the uh, pattern around when you're ready to finish it. Here is some batting to pad out your thing. We have a, there's a needle minder in here. Here we go. A needle minder that has the same wonderful saying on it. There are, got stickers. Ah, yep, running it in reverse and stickers. Here is a darling little pin case with some of Kathy's uh, favorite pins to stitch with in here. She said that she made all of these for everybody her very self and they're really quite darling. We have, let's see, I showed you the batting for the um, finishing. Here's a little bit of fabric for uh, a round. <laughs> she also charted this design to be used as one of her small little round things like so many of her other patterns are. 
there's just a lot in here. A lot, a lot, a lot. We have her pin, which is fabulous. There is a tag and the flo a floss ring, which all the floss was attached to until I pulled it out and did other stuff with it. Plus, we have a little bit of rickrack to help with our finishing, instructions, uh, rounds for the little round thing. Anyway, there's so much stuff in here. It was just absolutely flabbergasted. Just amazing, amazing, amazing. Oh, yes, plus the flosses and the fabric. And in addition to that, oh, she had Chantel from Chantel's 141 did the uh, the backer board and they told us which paint to get and best friend Lisa has ordered the paint so we'll be painting these up and they are all engraven with the hands-on hands on design logo back here because apparently these are slightly different than a standard size uh, finishing board that Chantel does. So that was what we received um, as our retreat project on Friday night and it's just I mean above and beyond above and beyond absolutely absolutely amazing let's get organized maybe we'll take a pause while I organize a little bit let's take a wee moment to talk about the fun ladies who were sitting at the table um, I, of course, went my best friend, Lisa. Um, we do a lot of traveling together. Two single ladies, wild and free, woot woot, um, off to see the world through cross-stitch. Okay, so it doesn't sound nearly as glamorous as I think it should. Uh, we sat with Sarah, our Stitching Kingdom, and her mom, Carrie, and they run the raffle uh, um, charity drive every year at Stitch West, at the Fall Stitch West. And so they are an absolute delight. Local stitchers, uh, loved them. Had it, had, it was so good to see them. We also sat with Stephanie from Ivy House Crafter. She hasn't posted a video in a very long time. Uh, she is just barely recovering from a big move to um, out of state, and the camera was moving there because Princess was doing her thing. Please don't stand on that. That's not for you. That's not for you. Then we had um, Sarah, who is the redneck bifocal stitcher, and her friend Jen Hoge was sitting there at the table. And so there were just six of us at the table. Were there? Can I count? One, two, three, seven. Seven of us at the table. I can't count. Cross stitcher, accountant. I count in my professional uh, life and not in my everyday relaxing life. Anyway, so they were there, and we just had the best time chatting with each other and stitching and seeing what everybody was doing. Uh, let's see, fun little table gifts. Jen had brought these cute little bags full of pumpkins with her, uh, mm, her two little cats on in floss drops with the name and number to the back. Very cute. A pair of, yep. Cute little scissors, purple of course, because that's my jam. And then she had a whole bunch of, uh, what are these, scissor fobs that say Stitch West on them, made. That was an excellent, excellent gift. Here, go play with that. Cat toy. Let's see. We had a packet of um, nummy fruit by the foot thing, not fruit by the foot. The... Uh, the, the fruities, the Tootsie Roll fruit little things, and a couple of fun um, stickers, Halloween stickers. Uh, this was passed out from a gal who didn't sit at our table. Um, I don't know who she was, but thank you. Absolutely delightful. This needs to go with this. We have uh, Melissa Schultz Gonzalez passed out. I should sew you organza bag with her information on it. And then down in here, you can see there's a, a thread. This is, this is tied in a knot, so we're not doing that. Anyway, thread, 
key ring and a uh, um, accoutrement, a dangly, a floss drop spangle. Yep, I'm a disaster. So there is that. That was one of the gifts that was passed out. Uh, Jeanette, who is Bella Rosa Design, gave me this cute little Oort jar. She had a cute purple, um, either a zipper pull or a floss uh, mm -hmm, scissor fob on it that I promptly removed and attached it to a different project bag because of course I did. One of the gals on our table, I forget who, I used cut out. You can barely see. You don't know that you can see Stitch West. Yeah, you barely can. Well, if the light was fine. Anyway, an anchor and Stitch West in vinyl and applied it to this cute little Oort container. I will never need for an Oort container again. Those are absolutely darling. Um, Stephanie put together a little kit with sugar, scissors, a um, tape measure, and a, um, a card that you can loop your uh, floss on and work on it. But I adopted that and put my floss on it for um, Make Today Count. So that's actually already put that in use. And a little sticker. Didn't peek at these. Oh, it's a needle threader. Look at that cute little cat. It's a needle threader. Adorable. So that's what Stephanie brought down to everybody. Shake, shake, shake. Put that here. Um, here we are. And Sarah, our Stitching Kingdom, and her mom, they like to put together survival kits. And so in their survival kits, they include a super scrumptious pair of socks. We have a bottle of lotion. There is a, a nail file, glass nail file. A, uh, a Bestitch Me silk as a sampler this year. And chocolate. Well, you can't see the chocolate. There's chocolate in here. There was more chocolate, but I ate some of the chocolate, so chocolate. In a cute little bag that can be used for a project bag or what have you. So that is their very generous table gift. Love it. Okay. Put that off here to the side. And that takes us a good chunk of the way from um, off of Friday into Saturday. Um, Friday, we just went up to Panera at the attached mall's food court, not Panera, the other one, Neaters, for lunch, and then just stopped off at the hotel restaurant for dinner, had a very good burger. It was a $20 burger. I never want to pay that much for a burger again, but it was, it was still pretty good, the sweet potato fries, delicious. And that kind of wraps up our adventures in cross-stitch for Friday whatever day of the week it was. All right, so the next day my goal was to finish off my pansies for Al Forest embroidery. Right there. And I am pleased to announce that I have indeed made that goal. I don't know what looks better. The light in here is random just because it's dark outside. And I turned on all the lights in the room. So hopefully. So it turned out so pretty. So pretty. There's a mistake. And if you can spot it right there, good on you. I'm not picking it out. All the way up there. Yay! Woo! So I really enjoyed this stitch. After a while, I just automatically got used to how the ebbs and flows in the the linen went so it was easier to stitch as I got used to it. This is this is not working as well as I had hoped. There we go. Almost there. Pretty, pretty, pretty. It is definitely going to be framed. I can't wait to get it framed. 
I need to get a few more things done in here in the Cave of Possibilities. Slowly working on moving stuff out of the uh, storage unit and back into the cave. So I think there's a few more boxes of books that I need to unload into the bookshelves that are in the closet. So once the closet is full of all of its stuff, then more of the yarn stuff will come back onto the yarn bookshelf. More of the cross-stitch stuff will go onto the cross-stitch bookshelf. The sewing stuff will go on the sewing bookshelf, and there's an order, and I'll be able to bring my desk home from the storage unit and really set up and get stitching like I like to do. That's a pretty good sidetrack. But here we are. So cute! Woot woot! Very, very pleased with the outcome for that one. I'll tuck that away into its little bin. Put this over here. And so with that done, I could have frogged out the last bit of garland from the uh, Santa, Santa, Santa's village, but I didn't. I really wanted to start in on make today count. And so here is some of the flosses I was using and the little floss card that Stephanie gave us. Put it to work right away. And I didn't show you guys what I gave out. All right, hang on. Or what? Lisa. Chaos, you guys. Anyway, so I got a good ways done on the lettering for Make Today Count. It's a really, really happy thing. This is a 32 count linen from Fabrics by Stephanie. Um, it is whatever is called for. Have to turn it over and read. Hmm. I don't know. It's, it's probably listed here, but on the inside, and I don't want to take the pattern out and take it out, but it's a 32 count slate or similar gray uh, by Fabrics by Stephanie. So I worked on that, got most of the words done. So I think it's going to be my, my at-home project for a little bit while I'm puttering around the house doing whatever. Fold that up. I am keeping it in a little um, project bag that my friend Deborah from Joyful Stitching. Look at those cute little animals. Look how wintry and awesome they are. Anyway, she put on, here's the front, a vinyl front bag. I usually don't buy vinyl front bags because I don't like the vinyl. It's kind of a weird textury thing. It's fine. It's a, I mean, the bag is well constructed, looks great. <laughs> I'm indecisive. Anyway, so a cute little bag that Deborah bought down. She uh, did the uh, stitching along the lake, stitching at the lake, Lake City stitching. Oh my gosh, they'll correct me in the comments when, when they get to it. So they're looking at doing that again up in Coeur d'Alene in the middle of August. There were two weekends they were looking at, but they hadn't quite decided which weekend they were going to do yet. So anyway, she brought me this cute little project bag and I am making use of it for Make Today Count. In it goes. What else? Wonderful things have we got going on. Telephone. I don't answer the phone. Do you answer the phone? I don't answer the phone. Oh, all right. Down we go into my uh, box of randomness. Um, Lisa brought everybody these cute little um, mesh bags. Super simple to keep stuff thing. Everybody needs a little lip balm from time to time. Everybody wears glasses, and so she included a little glasses wipe for everybody. So there is that. What else did we get? I went... Let's show off the little things that Deb and Kef had made to give to all of us. The first of which is this uh, project bag with darling little anchors on it. Super simple, a little bit of elastic to go around the um, button. And then inside, a lovely polka dot. I do love a polka dot. Really cute. 
I forget the name of the gal who they hired to do that. And then they made all um, little orc catchers out of here is an embroidery hoop, a little bag on the inside, and they gave out these uh, magnets with hooks on. So you can magnet your this to wherever you may be if you happen to be sitting somewhere that has a metal hook it on there and then you're just ready to go with your little orc catcher. So that was an excellent an excellent gift lovely and unexpected. Um, I tried so hard to remember. I think her name was Carol. Because I looked at um, her name tag and I said, I have to remember, I have to remember as I was looking at her name tag and she, uh, anyway, I'm a ditz and we all know that. I think her name was Carol. Anyway, she had found this tucked away somewhere and she knows my love of pansies so she brought it down and gave it to me. It's super cute, super small, partially finished. Please finish me. There's glass in there. I haven't, I haven't taken it all the way out to examine it. And then she had another cute little uh, pansy pattern from Designs by Karen. Send that cute little pansy right there. And it is meant to go on a, um, it's like a little sewing kit thing. It's all wrapped up. I don't dare open it, but it has a very nice uh, cup with some padding on it. There's a thimble in there and some wool and stuff. Um, instructions about how to finish it are inside. And so you stitch that up and you put it over the top of this to make a darling little um, pin cushion. It has some little bit of fabric in there. It's just cute, cute, cute. Add it to my wonderful collection of, of pansy things. Cute, cute, cute. So thank you so much, Carol, for bringing that over to me. I hope your name is Carol, and if not, I'm just embarrassed. I'm just embarrassed. Okay. Let's see. I, uh, I did a little shopping. I wasn't super crazy with the shopping. I picked up the uh, tomato, tomato um, pattern from Hands On Design over at their booth. Let's see. Delicious Threads. Jen was there vending. She had all manner of beautiful project bags and uh, needle minders. And I went the uh, needle minder route. She had sago lilies inside of the state of Utah. And then a little cat wrapped in Christmas tree lights. And that just reminded me of Princess. And so I had to pick up the little cat wrapped in Christmas tree lights. So there was that. And then... I'm going to put them back in the tin for safekeeping until I can hang my um, my uh, my boards back up the wall that hold, holds all of my needle minders. That was today's project until I remembered that everybody would be gone for a good hour after I got home. So here we are doing a video. <laughs> oh, let's show you what I, I passed out. Um, so much to love had a whole bunch of their sidekicks on sale for $10. So I just went in and I think I bought 14 or 50 of them. Just went, bought a whole variety, some Halloween, some Christmas, some fall, some not just, you know, whatever pattern here and there. And then I tucked in a couple of stickers, um, clay by Kim. I haven't been able to get a clay minder from her in half of forever. But she has stickers of some of her fairy doors, so I bought a variety of the fairy door stickers and slipped that in. And then there's another artist on Etsy who has the pansy stickers, so I bought a few of those and tucked those into the little things. And then somewhere along the line, I went crazy and I made about 18, 20 of these uh, little orc catchers. Um, you know the ones where you can snap snap the edges together, right? 
it doesn't take that long. We'll just do them all, enjoy the, the noise. So, you can snap those together for a little tiny orc catcher. And then I was thinking about how I wanted the snaps to go when I was installing snaps. And I did have some flubs, you guys. I my, my prototype is lost. It was, whoo, that prototype, you guys. Mm, you'd think I'd never sewn a, a stitch in my life. Uh, the second one was a little bit better, but not much. And then by the third one, I think I'd, I'd finally gotten it down and figured out what was working, what was not working. And so, anyway, I've also made it so the snaps line up when you fold it in half this way so that you can just snap it down and keep your little orts inside until you get home or get to a place with a trash can so you can go ahead and empty them out. So those are the little things that I gave away for, for Stitch West. I have about 20, I used two, um, these are five inch squares. These were right, so there's about 20 more of the little orc catchers that I can make for upcoming events. Next up, uh, Saturday. I'm still doing Saturday. We had at four o'clock was the exchange, uh, the Smalls Exchange, and I put up a little Satsuma chicken. I made another one and I didn't take a picture of it all finished um, or hardly at all, so I apologize for that. But the uh, the gal who got that, she absolutely loved it and was just thrilled to pieces with it. And I picked up this, you know, Happy Holidays little Christmassy box. We'll show you this, the small things. And this was uh, made by Anna. Um, she's just the cutest little lady. So there's a spool of um, ribbon in here. And there are some little floss bobbins in the shape of flowers. So those are super cute. Uh -huh. That's what's in the, in the box still. And then she also had made a gorgeous, Christmassy, wonderful uh, project bag. Isn't that cute with the rickrack and the little snowmen? There's so many little snowmen. She did such an excellent job with the, uh, with it. She said she didn't, but she she really did. And look how cute that snowflake fabric on the inside is. That's really cute. She does a better job at her bags than uh, I do at my bags because she actually went to all the work to do the uh, the false bottom and sew it down. Whereas I'm like, nope, I'm just gonna fold this in half and call it good. So there's that, and then she made one of these cute little um, fabric, either a keychain or tab, or you can put your flosses on that for a floss ring with a wonderful dangly. But then I'm gonna have to open her, her note. Where did I put her note? Here's her note. To remind me what the name of the pattern is. This is Merry Little Christmas by Shakespeare's, uh, Shakespeare's Peddler. Uh, 40 count, 1 over 2. And she just used some of her favorite uh, colors. It's finished absolutely gorgeous. And I don't think I could have been luckier or picked a, a better little pillow thing. Isn't it beautiful? Oh my goodness, I just can't even tell you. So cute with Christmas lights and buttons and rickrack. And that darling um, snowflake print on the back and a little more rickrack. Cute. I love it. I love it. I've had it sitting up on my uh, mm -hmm, cross-stitch bookshelf over here where I can see it when I'm sitting in this chair. This chair right here. All right. So that was what was in the Smalls Exchange. And... Uh, Kathy Haberman laughed when she saw everything that had been put up on the uh, the table for what everybody had brought for the Smalls Exchange, and she said, you guys don't know the definition of small. <laughs> so I guess we had overdone it a little bit with what everybody had sewn and, and done. And then at 7 o'clock on Saturday, we had another another little presentation from, from Kathy, 
and you thought yesterday's thing was amazing, well, there was more to it because she had designed this cute little uh, leaf, leave me alone. Today counts, but leave me alone. And then she did, and of course, like the other one, it contains everything you need to finish it off. Plus, she taught a little bit of a finishing class. So, here's Rick Rack to finish the Leaf Me Alone when we get to it. Two cardboard rounds, and she taught us how to um, do, do the weaving to pull it around, kind of like you would a yellow, uh, a lello, uh, a yo yo. And then how to do the lacing. I kind of made it up to the yo yo part all by myself, but then the lacing bit at just. My brain crashed and I couldn't figure it out, and I was having none of it. And so Lisa finished the the, uh, um, the lacing on the back of that thing, and I think the the uh, whew, words. It's late. I've been doing work stuff all day. Anyway, Lisa finished it off for me just because I don't. I'm not all that great at. It's small handwork. I managed cross stitch just fine. There are holes and a pattern that tells me what to do. Having to make it up on my own, a little bit harder. I'm not so good at that. Um, the fabric, uh, I don't want to unroll it, but, well, I'm gonna, it's coming off. You can barely see it, but. Kathy took the time right there to mark the fabric for where the large piece goes and then where the two round pieces can go. So we have enough fabric to finish all three of the patterns that um, Kathy gave us. That was my mom's cell phone, and my mom is not here. And I am not answering my mother's cell phone when my mother is not here. So there you go. That's all the gifties and all the stuffs and more than enough stuff. And I've got a mess. I've got a big mess, you guys. And the cat's happy, mostly. Did I look at you? Are you going to come over here and say hi? Nope. Maybe not. Um, life stuff, pretty simple. Just chugging along at work, trying to get everything ready for month in close, which is the end of this week. Um, doing a lot of training since we are converting over to work day in January. So I've been doing a lot of training, at least five hours of training every week. Uh, this week I have six hours. I don't have time to do my real job for all the training we've been doing. I'm hopeful that the conversion will go all right, but it still feels like there's a lot, a lot of stuff that we haven't gone over yet. Just the basic stuff that I do every day. I haven't seen anything of it. So we're just, we're just a little worried, a little, little worried. Um, a lot, a lot worried. So we'll see. And that pretty much covers it for me. Stitch West, two thumbs up in my book. Probably going to go again if I get in. Probably going to put my name on the list and hope I get to go again. That's, yeah. Mm. Uh, what else? Work. It's good. Stitching good. We're done with retreats until next March we're, when Lisa and I are headed to St. George for the uh, St. George Stitchers retreat put on Misty Connolly. Uh, I saw the other day that she said it was full but there is a wait list so you can get on the wait list. Uh, search on Instagram for Misty Connolly um, or St. George Stitchers Retreat 2025 or um, the Crazy Woman Stitching Retreat 2025. So there are all your all your many things. All right, guys. It's been good. I hope you have been having good times as well. Um, remember, kindness costs you nothing. One step forward, one step up little bit of a time and we can change the world. I love you guys. Have a good one. Bye.